Today is the 15th day of January 2015, and we are honored to have Santosh Ben back with us. Santosh, welcome. Namaskar. The last interview with Santosh was so beautiful that people have passed the DVD around. Many, many have watched it. And she spoke about her life. But today, we are going to cover different areas. For example, Santosh, many people today are seeking. They don't know about Mother and Sri Aurobindo, but they are seeking. They, they don't want the old life. Uh, what do you recommend for these young people who are, who are seeking for something higher, something truer? When we come to Mother and Sri Vindu, any one of us, naturally there must be some urge within which is inspiring them, which is guiding them, which is urging them to come here. Isn't it? Yes. Otherwise no one can come. When one doesn't have the aptitude for this life, no one will turn up. The world is big enough for them to live. But when we come here, we come with certain aspiration within. We may know it clearly or we may not, we may know it vaguely. And when we enter this atmosphere, when we enter Pondicherry, when we feel the atmosphere and when we see that our deities, Mother and Sri There is some commotion inside, some awakening inside, which pushes them always. And knowingly or unknowingly, even at the time of Mother also, when she used to instill that aspiration in us through her eyes by merely looking at us, even then, some people may feel it very clearly, they may decide their future very clearly, but some are vague enough, but still pulled. They feel pulled. Something from within is pulling them to join the ashram. So they wish to stay here then. So mother used to. She always already saw, and she then, still more, she examines them that way, inside. And seeing our possibilities even, even though we may not be very clear about our own selves, but she sees, she used to see possibilities, potentialities. And accordingly, she used to grant us permission to stay here or not. So that way, I think most of us are here. Now it depends. During our stay here, it may be lifelong, it may be for some years, whether we have utilized or whether we have developed our inner soul up to that level which we are expected or which we are told or we are just again fallen back on the same breath of the old life. That is a very, very essential point for all of us. If we cannot progress, naturally we will lag behind in everything. And what does this progress mean? How to keep in that burning this fire within? For that, Mother and Sri has given enough guidelines, 
you know, in their letters, otherwise also in their writings. So I think it's not such a difficult thing if you are a little conscious and try to imbibe that thing from their literature, from their words, from our prayers, and with their grace. They are always there, ready to help us. Always there, I can say with confidence. It's we that we lack that confidence, that aspiration, that prayer, that fire, and that constant burning should be there. We are not to go astray in all those things, just for once we are granted, it's our life mission is over. That is not the life here. <clears throat> when you are granted admission, permission, real work starts then. Isn't it? And for that, to keep that aspiration burning, Mother and Sri both of them said so many times, in so many letters, first an aspiration, first prayer rather. Aspiration is still another step. When we can't know, we can't decide our future, what to do, how to do. At least that much link we should have with the mother to ask her, to pray for our difficulties. In the beginning, it may be just a repetition of words, but ultimately, it links us with our soul, and then it becomes aspiration. Which mother used to do with her eyes, in a moment, we may take some time, some months, some years, whatever it is, it depends upon the intensity of our prayer, our confidence, our faith, everything. But it comes. Nobody is empty-handed, whosoever stands before her. So I should say that I was lucky enough to have that opening from the very beginning from the mother. Now, from prayer to aspiration, yes. then would you talk a bit about surrender? Yeah. Then, after the aspiration, when you love somebody, when you aspire for somebody, when you have a yearning for anybody, even humanly also, what we do, when we love somebody, what do we feel? The first gesture of our being is to give ourselves, isn't it? Whom we love, always in our thoughts will be what best I can give to my lover, to my beloved, isn't it? Same way, when that uh, fire has burnt, when that yearning has come, automatically that's your being starts flowing towards that. And I should say, that is the real surrender. In words we can say, you surrender everything to the Lord. When you pray, you say, all this my being and all that is yours. Very well, it has to be done. But not only words. In practice it comes when you really pine for that Lord. That uh, burning fire within should be there. So aspiration leads to surrender automatically. We don't have to ask question to ourselves how to surrender. That is, I should say, an extreme ultimate step. Before that, again, the same method we have to employ, prayer. 
we must feel start feeling at least everything belongs to lord not me my every action my every thought my every word my every relation every connection whatever i do from morning to night should be inspired by you and should be offered to you that should be my gesture so first you can always pray but then it comes automatically and when it comes automatically she doesn't care to listen our words she so she sees the flowing of the consciousness towards her which she is ready to accept every moment yeah. every moment she receives that and when problems come up with others in oneself yes problems of what type disharmony mm. anger mm. desire mm. ego mm. we can go on and on well, yeah. <laughs> 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 yes the method of dissolution for everything is the same <laughs> when we approach her when we go to her when we try to become when we their consciousness when we enlarge our consciousness ego can go only that is the last thing to go but it reflects in everything whatever we do whatever we think isn't it whatever relation we have that supremacy that i am something that is always there so to change this ego first of all we have to know whether we are egoistic we don't even realize that is the main hurdle we don't even realize we justify go on justifying our actions yeah our thinking so all these things even to remove anger anger comes when when things happen contrary to your ideas to your expectations we get angry we get irritated isn't it? we are thinking of doing the one thing in a particular way the person you are connected with in work he may think otherwise or he may not do according to your instructions if you are in charge also these are small little examples but in life anger comes when when anything displeasing comes to you you are irritated beyond expectation so the first thing will be we should be always above our own selves we should not insist what we think what we do the way we think the way we do is all right others are wrong when we have a general larger understanding of our own selves as well as for the others anger won't come you won't react you will be peaceful within as before you will try to understand the viewpoint the stand of the other person and then reconcile if you find still that you are right he is wrong or he may be wrong because it happens nobody is perfect then we can make harmonious understanding but we should not insist that is the point that is the trouble with human nature but i think is all right he should do this no you have expressed your view let him think over if not at this moment he may think the next moment that he is not right and 
if you don't insist being a head of the department, I mean, see the situation where you are leading, any situation, not head of the department, mm -hmm. if I'm home, any, anywhere, when you feel that uh, you know, things should be in this way, this is the correct way, and, but we don't, we shouldn't insist. First of all, you should give little time for him, for the other person to think, give him some space, and with love. Try to convince him, if you had to convince him, with love, that you also take care of him, you also understand him, so that he can come round. And inwardly, we can always our we can always refer our difficulties to mother. Sri Aurobindo says the first essential thing is peace. Yes. Just in this previous context, I'll just I'll say <coughs> Shivindu has a very jokingly once said that when I talk of surrender, oh, yes. the first thing people surrender is their common sense. Common sense, yes. <laughs> so that is why to know what real surrender is, it's very ne much necessary for our lives. How, peace bring, you are how telling. do you bring in the peace? Um, well, for me also, this has been a great challenge till now. Although I had, as in the last talk, I told you about my experience. Yes. And to some extent, that is always in the background. Real peace comes really with the inner contact. then we don't have to invoke also. As soon as she stands before you, you are in her environment. She covers you with all that is her, hers. And she has everything, whatever we ask for. Her mere presence, her mere, mere coming, so peaceful, so blissful, the very memory of it is so very blissful, that automatically comes. But in the present, in the day-to-day -day life, in the problems, when you are facing all the time some challenges, some difficulties, some problems, or problems to solve, even then, the stage of our consciousness should be always to stand back. That is the first fundamental rule of spiritual life for Mother and Sri also, and for Gita, every Shastra scripture will say that to detach yourself first is the first necessity. Now, how to stand back? And that should become a natural state of your consciousness, then only you can remain peaceful. Peaceful doesn't mean when we sit for meditation, close our eyes, and just we remember for some time we are very peaceful, the rest of the time we are all the time agitated. That is not peace. Real peace comes when we know that this is not, this outer self is not I. In Gita, it's very beautifully said, and this I have experienced by Mother's grace. Then you need not do meditation, even it comes automatically. You face any difficulty very automatically. You just stay behind. Get, don't get involved with the situation. And then whatever comes will bring with it solutions, because you are seeing from another level, and that solves everything, and we remain peaceful. But when we are involved, when we are attached, 
maybe persons, maybe situations, maybe our environments. Then we immediately take the, those vibrations. Person is very agitated. He is angry with you. He has spoken. He has abused you. You also get irritated, isn't it? You will also reply in the same, retort in the same way. First reaction will be that, mostly. Or if you are sensible enough to control yourself, you may not utter the same abuses, but you will feel hurt. Yes. So in that case, but if you are aloof, then nothing touches you. And that aloofness itself pacify all the dedication, anger, everything. To the person also, to you also. To the person also. Yes. But for that, we shouldn't, from the mouth we are saying, I'm very peaceful. Mm. But inside you are bubbling. That is not peace. Yeah. That, that won't have influence. How did you come to have the peace? You said it was a long journey till you developed the peace because of the And still also, nature. and still now also I fail at times. It's not that I'm always in that state. I do fail so <laughs> many times. But um, <clears throat> you had spoken to me about experiences, and you said they don't take us very far unless we translate them into everyday life. That is true. Both the things are helping. Both the things are means to advance. Without experience, you may not have the that firm faith, because the thing you have seen with your with experience yourself, you have naturally more faith in that than the any sayings, any words of anyone, isn't it? So experiences help that way when you have personal experiences. But if we are just feel proud of it, oh, I am having so many beautiful experiences, I'm, I must be something within, then everything is gone. No use. It has made you only egoistic, isn't it? So for that, what I have seen, what I have experienced, that experience should lead me, should tell me that you have to advance still further. It's not that you are something. By the grace, you are getting it. So invoke that grace that I may go still further. I may still come nearer to you. And experiences don't come to everybody. That is also true. By sadhana, some people may have that inner opening. Some people have, as in my case, I, sh I should say, it was God-given gift from the very childhood. But it never made me mad that I'm something. I used to see my questions papers before my eyes, before the examination. But those things didn't make me mad or make me my head off that I'm something. I could tell the events beforehand. And that was not my doing something, no. 
I should say it was a God-given gift. But I developed it. Developed it in the sense that I took it in a very light way, took it as a milestone for my sadhana, and proceeded like that. So certain things God has given me very natural way, in a very natural way. The opening to the mother, first the remembrance of the mother. There was some urge without seeing her. I must go there. I must see mother. That was my only aim while staying outside. So probably all these experiences, they were helping me. Preparing you? Preparing me and brought me to the true path. And because I was little open, I was ready, I was aspiring that way, mother also didn't find any difficulty to open, go on opening from me from within. So I say both things are helping, helpful. But most of us, we don't have experiences, but we should not be depressed. But oh, that person is having so much. I don't have, even after so many years, I don't see anything, I don't find anything, I don't feel anything. We may get depressed. When we hear somebody else's experiences, after experiences, we may feel depressed. I didn't get anything after 50 years, even. After how many years? 50 years even, I didn't get anything. I didn't feel like that. But that is not the criteria. With the experiences, we have to grow. Mother and Shravinda Yoga is, we have to grow in consciousness, we have to change the consciousness, and we have to establish God, establish that consciousness in us, and we have to we become that consciousness. We have to become so large as they are. Then every difficulty dissolves. It is our petty li little closed rooms which we are living in that is disturbing us all through life, our life. So experience this doesn't matter, do not matter at all. They will come by their own whenever time comes, whenever God sees for you to be all proper. We are not to pine for experiences, but when they come, most welcome. When we take a more confident step towards the goal towards our future. You once told me, Mother is bearing all. Yes. To say it in words, you may not believe it. Mother is bearing all, she is doing all. She's looking after us all in every way. Mere words, will you, do you think it will help you? It will influence you? Unless you have that experience with them. When you are in certain difficulty, difficult position, difficult situation, and when she comes, all of a sudden, in a most unexpected way, then you realize oh, how she is with us. But this thing becomes very natural when we are one with her. So always in sadhana there are two steps. First, it may be a hearing, it may be reading, it may be remembering, it may be prayer, it, whatever it is. Ultimately, we have to be one with her. And to be one with her is psychic supreme. That is a mirror within ourselves which shows our real self as well as the deity seated within. And then we feel at every step of life, 
every moment I can say. It's not I who do anything. Not this I which I am, I call myself as I. No. It's not I that do anything. You can see always Mother is doing everything, Lord is doing anything, God is doing whatever name we may give. Only when we have that psychic experience, that opening. More and more psychic governs our outer life, the more and more we are in that stage. And for that, even our sons, the rishis, everybody, they have said, Sahaj Samadhi Bhali, a spontaneous trance. You are always somewhere else, because you are seeing your beloved before your eyes. And we are, when we are full of her thoughts, in our consciousness, in our doings, in our actions, when we feel her everywhere, there is no area which is left out of without mother without Lord, without God, then it is a very, very natural and constant Samadhi. So she bears all when we see with our eyes, when we feel with our experience working her. Till then, we have to believe what they have said, what we have read, yes. and we have to keep that faith at least. But one day we have to realize it. That should be our prayer, I should say. Our aspiration. And she grants it. She is for that. But for else she has come here. In this world. Dealing with pain. Hmm? Dealing with pain. People, so many people are in pain. Physical pain. Or yes, let's, or talk, or let's so? talk about physical first. Hmm? Physical pain first. <laughs> <laughs> I also suffer. <laughs> I am suffering here already. <laughs> <And here also. laughs> it's difficult for you to sit down. You can take stool. Take that stool. It will be afterwards very painful for you. Take this stool. Sit down. I can't sit down on the floor. Uh -huh. <laughs> I'm more comfortable now. <laughs> how, do, how do you work on your pain? Well, both ways. Physical has to be treated physically also, medically also. <laughs> It is not that with our consciousness we can we don't have that much of mastery. Yes. We are not all the time twenty four yes. hours with the God. Yes. There are lapses, there are moments when we are separated. Yes. You keep one more two more cushions on that. I don't know what her name. You keep cushions also over that. <laughs> So for physical, again the same thing, process of prayer, that also should continue. Physically, medically also we have to treat. And I generally say and feel, God has given us machine with which we work all the time, but we, not, we know nothing about its parts. <laughs> when it gets stuck up, we don't know how to do. We can do this repair, isn't it? <laughs> but not with the body. We don't know what is happening. We rush to doctor who knows, and that he also may not know the full thing. It goes on with the physical, like that. <laughs> and we also go stumbling, suffering, and uh, may, may lessen it sometimes. 
little less of suffering, little less of pain with all these aids. We take. But more and more, we should be conscious as we are conscious in our consciousness with other things, with our anger, with our nature, with our character, with our mental thinking. As we are going on sorting things there, offering things there, enlarging our self in every way, trying to do it in our feelings, in our emotions, as we are sublimating ourselves. Physically also we should try to, apart from all these physical helps, there also what I found most effective way of uh, coming out of pain is to detach yourself. Although it is difficult, not always happens, but it happens. And the willpower. Willpower in such a way that body has to reject it. It shouldn't accept. Generally what we say, oh, age, it has to come. It will come. Can't help it. You have to suffer. No. This is not our yogic attitude. You have to fight. Yes. Fight with the will. If somebody stands before us, challenges us, wants to fight, then should we run away? Or should we give our face to, all right, we slap? We should all be able to slap it. And that comes from inner willpower. Detach yourself, call the Lord, rest he will do. You may not find it immediate effect, but the next moment you may find that, oh, everything is gone. But it's not so very practical for us because we are very much tied down with the physical. But it's not that the ways are not there. How much we succeed it depends on us. <laughs> I also cannot boast. Although I have gone through so much of physical suffering, as I told you last time. Yes. But. Uh, they have passed like nightmares. Really, I didn't feel that part of suffering. The, in proportion, they came the, all the major operations. But not that much of suffering, but it could have been. Would you they could have been fatal also. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. yes. Would you speak a little on humility and gratitude? <laughs> doesn't come merely by effacing yourself. In words, when we say to somebody, oh, this is your grace, this is your doing, I am nothing. You just be meek. You just show yourself as uh, you are you feel you are nothing and you can do nothing or uh, that is not humility. We may not boast what we are doing. And when we don't boast, it doesn't mean we are humble. Inside, we may still be liking, people should admire me, people should know. <laughs> that I have something, isn't it? Yeah. I, I have achieved something. If somebody behaves in a very uncasual way or abnormal way with you, then see yourself how you react. So that is not the real humility. 
आउटसाइड यू मेर टॉक वो आप तो बहुत मेहनत हैं बहुत यार सो ग्रेट यार सो हम्बल पर्सन फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल ही डजेंट प्रोनाउंस दैट आई एम सो एंड सो आई एम सच एंड सच वन थिंग second thing is because he has realized himself within himself that it's not i who is doing anything actually in my own life also there is someone else who is over me who is doing everything so how can be he be egoistic how can he be arrogant how can he boast because he before his eyes he is feeling everything in his heart of hearts he is feeling everything it's not i that who is moving my life who is doing the actions it is someone else so credit goes all the credit goes to him i am living because of him i am surviving because of him i am doing things because of him real humility comes then it is all right for our <coughs> conduct for our day to day life we shouldn't be arrogant we shouldn't be so many things are there little little thing that are they are also necessary because you wish should not confront anybody with everything that is not the how practical life is led but the person who is really in contact within he will never fail he is a true humble person he won't announce also that i am humble the very figure the very personality the very utterances the very face the very influence of the personality when he sits with you he will emanate that is real humility that is real peace when you find peace in somebody's presence maybe saint maybe sadhu maybe sant anybody why why do we feel peace in their presence they don't tutter any word maximum they will do they will put their hand on you you will pass them you will sit near them and then you find peace that emanates from the being that's what we are to be every one of us and gratitude also i should say this is a moment to moment our deepest most sublime feelings offered to the divine we always say that when somebody does something for you you must feel grateful you we will write also like that somebody has done something we will reply and i am very grateful to you that is one way in inter dealings we are and we should be that much at least we should have in our normal day to day life we should have that much of gratefulness because gratefulness always it's not only good for the person or for your inter relations but it brings joy to you all of you must have felt it gratefulness brings real joy in life and that joy that goodness again brings more goodness to you that's the beauty of gratitude and when we love the divine automatically you are with every breath you are 
constantly offering yourself with great fullness. It is not that mother has done something, I must write, I must tell her that you have done so much for me and I am grateful. She doesn't expect that. There is a line in Savitri, mm -hmm. a prayer upon his lips mm -hmm. and the great name. Mm -hmm. Taking the mother's name. Mm -hmm. Can you speak about that? Mm -hmm. The necessity of taking her name. Mm -hmm. Same thing. Same thing. When she is with you every time, in every breath. It's only that will come. And that makes effective. People say, I also pray, but I don't get that response. What I prayed for. Every, everybody, every great soul will say, you pray, you pray, you take Nam Japa. Mm. You jap. Everybody will yeah. say. But do we, everybody realize what does it mean? It is not verbal. You may not utter also, but it is something within you that goes constantly, incessantly. That japa is japa. And that even God cannot ignore. <laughs> In Mahabharata, so very episode is there. Krishna is sitting. His wife, Rukmani, is pressing his feet. Some bhakta, some devotee is remembering him earnestly for help. And he, it was Draupadi when the, the garment was being opened. So she was remembering him earnestly. And Krishna used to sit up and then lie down. Used to sit up and then lie down. Then Rukmani asked, what are you doing? Ultimately, after doing so many times this gesture, he left immediately. Then Rukmini asked, what was the mystery behind your this action? He said, yes, Draupadi was calling me, but till then half-mindedly, half-heartedly. She was expecting, I'll call Yudhishthira, I will call Nakul, I will call Sadev, he will help me, he will come, he will do this, he will do that. And sometimes in between he was remembering me also. But when she was disappointed from every side and she called me alone, then I could not stay. <laughs> so that is our condition, all of us. We say we call him, but do we call full-heartedly? We can ask ourselves. So more and more, this is a path, infinite path. We have to march on so many things to <clears throat> establish in ourselves. This is an infinite path. We must go on. But the proper light, the proper guidelines should be there. We should have. And that also, ultimately, it comes from within. And within, we know it's the only path to take for us. Yes, it eludes <laughs> because we are not accustomed to it. <laughs> Do you have any questions for Santosh? You were laughing about the pain, but huh? physical pain, but what about another pain? Mental pain? Psychological or huh? psychological pain or psychological pain. Uh, Alexei is asking about psychological pain. 
means again of the relations you mean of the contact with the situations, persons or in the work or your inner difficulties you are asking inner difficulties <coughs> what type of for example you asked <coughs> you just said that experiences some people would have for 50 years have a doing to sadhana but without experiences and if he had them then how did he know that he is moving on the path? So there is some agony, I would say, inside or some difficulties. So that happens. That happens and it's a very sad thing. That would be some hidden, some dormant things come up and they are led away by that. It's a very sad thing and it happens at times, not very common. But it happens. And for that, well, mothers and children, those physical presence was a very solid support for it because they knew the future, they knew the destiny, they knew the potentiality, and they knew the way to bring that soul back. Sometimes they themselves used to send the person out. For some time you be out, have the experience. But they used to go on constantly working on them. They used to work on her. So ultimately then after maybe one year, two years, three years, whatever it is, they used to come. So uh, that is sometimes it is out of individual control, I should say. And a person has to be very, very vigilant about himself from the beginning and always pray in the right direction. The things which we cannot sort out ourselves, we cannot correct ourselves, we should always refer to her. She will take care of it. In the end, it is time already, no? Yes. All right. We can go on that. Apart from all that, all the other things which you have asked about the nature, anger, this jealousy, whatever it is, humility and everything. One main hurdle for most of us, probably for every one of us, is sex. Isn't it? Yes. Because it leaves nobody. And you cannot be an imposter in this life, in this yogic life. And things are not allowed in this life. So what to do? With the age, with everybody, it comes. No? Some part of our life is, so to say, is eaten up by this unhealthy, un this thing. It's very true. Very true. Without it also nobody says, at least in the West, it's a very natural thing. They take it in a very natural way. But in our Indian society it is still out of life, of spiritual life. They want to keep it out. But can it remain out like that only? By telling? It will attack anybody. And it does attack. It comes in life. As soon as you grow young, this thing also shows its face. What to do? So mother has tried so many things. At least she has established in the consciousness that we, we could come out little further, little more, one step more higher. We don't have that particular feeling, that indecency or that indulgence or that thing. But it comes in many ways, emotionally it may come. Mm -hmm. We may feel attached to the opposite sex, attracted. For some years it may go on, go on like any other intense, with intensity and uh, intimacy. But ultimately it may drop off. 
if we are sincere to our path. But still, <clears throat> I am telling you my own experience, don't think that I am somebody. When I came, I was so young, at the age of 20. And because from the, as I told you, from the childhood I had this attitude for spiritual life. When I came here, I used to see young children, young boys and girls moving about freely and having friendships and all that. So one question used to be in my mind, living under the mother's light and guidance and everything presence, how can they love human beings like that? Is mother not enough? How can they divide that love among themselves? What is the need? Why do you feel that need? They don't get sufficient from the mother? And uh, then I should ask, I was asking her in my prayers, in my meditations, if this weakness has to recur, in every life. What is the idea? Can't we conquer it in any life and so that we are free in the next life? No way. Because really I, it was disgusting for me at that age. Even bearing children and all that, from the very beginning I used to have that same super mind children would be like that. That ideas I like from the very beginning. So it was a real shocking experience for me that why living under mother, they feel the necessity of loving each other. Can any human being be a perfect being? Why should I get attracted? I can have friendship. I can have a love that is very, very, so to say, pure, sublime thing that you feel some, with some you are congenial, with others you are not. That is very natural. But it is not that you are tied down. This sex relation is, makes you helpless, absolutely. And then so many things come, all that jealousy and all that, everything comes with that. Then I asked her, at least make me free, that is what I want to pray to you. I should, what we say in Hindi, I should uh, make you, I should feel you, I should uh, think of you in every way. Maybe a husband, maybe a friend, maybe a father, maybe a brother, maybe a, in all relations I may see you, not anyone else. That will solve the problem. Mother says it in her prayers and meditations. To see only you. And then, when I was sitting near Samadhi one day, after my dining room's work, see, I'm sitting here. She came with two garlands in her hand in our Indian marriages. At the time of marriage, husband, that boy also brings, and the girl also have one garland they put in each other's, so that they are now husband wife. In West, whatever your ways are. She came with two garlands. She put in my neck, and I put in her neck. It was an experience to feel God as your everything, your husband and everything. And she has made it so beautifully explained to me, made me realize and made me, money. she imprinted in my heart the relation with her. And I was free really from that nuisance.
सो वी हैव टू गो ए वेरी लॉन्ग वे ऑल ऑफ अस एंड स्टिल गो ऑन परफेक्टिंग बिकॉज इट्स एन एंडलेस पार्ट बट आई एम सॉरी टू शेयर विद दिस सो वेरी पर्सनल थिंग विद यू आई नेवर टोल यू एनी बडी मे वी आस्क यू टू कम अगेन <laughs> I'm sure there is so much more to speak about Sri Aurobindo also. When it translates in practical life everything is beautiful. That's what I can say. <laughs>